Hello and welcome to the session. In this session, we will discuss trigonometric or polar form of a complex number and argument of a complex number. First of all, let us discuss trigonometric or polar form of a complex number. Now, the polar coordinate system is two-dimensional system in which each point on the plane is determined by a distance from a fixed point and an angle from a fixed direction. Now we know that a complex number is of the form that is, let us take a complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota where a and b belong to the set of real numbers So the complex number is of the form a plus b iota where a and b belongs to the set of real numbers. Now we can represent the complex number z is equal to a plus b iota by the point p whose coordinates are a, b. So this is how we can represent the complex number a plus b iota graphically now in polar coordinate system this point P which is representing the number that is the complex number A plus B iota so the point P has the coordinates A B so this point P can be specified by giving a distance r of the point P from the origin that is this distance and the angle theta between the line joining the origin to the point P and the positive x axis that is this angle B theta that is the angle between the line joining the origin to the point that is to the given point which is representing the complex number which means this line R and the positive X axis so the angle between them is called the angle theta now by Pythagoras theorem In this triangle, now let this be point R. So by applying Pythagoras theorem, in the triangle OPR, we get R square is equal to A square plus B square, which implies R is equal to square root of A square plus B square. Now we know that for a complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota modulus of z is equal to square root of a square plus b square. So here we are getting r is equal to square root of a square plus b square that means r is equal to the modulus of z. Also in the triangle OPR perpendicular over base that is B over A will be equal to tan theta so we have tan theta is equal to B over A which implies theta is equal to tan inverse of B over A now consider the same triangle again and in this we are getting perpendicular over hypotenuse that is P over R is equal to sin theta. So we have B over R is equal to sin theta which implies B is equal to R sin theta. Also A over R is equal to cos theta 
सो वी आर हैविंग ए ओवर आर इज इक्वल टू कॉस थीटा विच इंप्लाइज ए इज इक्वल टू आर कॉस थीटा सो वी आर गेटिंग द कोर्डिनेट्स एस ए इज इक्वल टू आर कॉस थीटा एंड बी इज इक्वल टू आर साइन थीटा नाउ वी हैव कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर जेड इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस बी आर एटा देर फोर सब्सिट्यूटिंग द वैल्यूज ऑफ ए एंड बी एंड दिस वी गेट द पोलर फॉर्म ऑफ द कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर जेड इज नाउ ए इज इक्वल टू आर कॉस थीटा सो इट इज आर कॉस थीटा प्लस आयोटा इंटू नाउ बी इज आर साइन थीटा सो इट इज आयोटा इंटू आर साइन थीटा विच इज फर्दर इक्वल टू नाउ टेकिंग आर कॉमन इट विल बी आर इंटू कॉस थीटा प्लस आयोटा साइन थीटा विच कैन बी रिटर्न एस आर सिस थीटा Now in this, C is representing cos, I is representing the imaginary number iota, and S represents sine. Now Z is equal to a plus b iota is called the rectangular form, and Z is equal to R cis theta, that is. R into cos theta plus iota sin theta the whole is called the polar form or polar representation of the complex number z and the polar form is also called the trigonometric form now we know that in the complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota a is called the real part and b is called the imaginary part of the complex number z So here we are getting r is equal to square root. That is, r is equal to root a square plus b square. That means r is equal to square root of the square of the real part of set plus the square of the imaginary part of set. And here we are getting theta is equal to tan inverse. b over a which means theta is equal to tan inverse the imaginary part of z which is p over the real part of z which is a and r is a positive number as r is the absolute value or modulus of a complex number so in the polar coordinate system the complex number a plus b iota is represented by the point r theta and we have got a is equal to r cos theta b is equal to r sin theta and r is equal to square root of a square plus b square which is equal to the modulus of z which is just the distance from the origin to the point p which is representing the complex number a plus b i alpha therefore r is a positive number and here theta is equal to tan inverse b over a Now let us discuss some remarks. First is the angle theta is measured in radians. And zero is less than equal to theta is less than two pi. And secondly. Every point 
in the plane has polar coordinates r theta where r is greater than equal to 0 and 0 is less than equal to theta is less than 2 pi or conversely you can say that for every positive value of r and each value of theta between 0 and 2 pi we get a unique point in the complex plane with polar coordinates r theta and for the point p the segment op is called the radius vector and next r is equal to 0 if and only if the complex number z is equal to 0 now let us discuss argument of a complex number now we have already discussed the polar coordinate system now for the complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota which is represented by this point this angle that is theta is called the argument of amplitude of the complex number z which is equal to a plus p iota therefore we can write theta is equal to argument of z or amplitude of z and also we know that theta is equal to tan inverse v over a therefore an argument or amplitude of the complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota is an angle theta with initial side the positive x axis and the terminal side the ray from the origin containing the complex number a plus b iota now let us discuss some remarks first is the value of theta where minus pi is less than theta is less than equal to pi is called the principal value of the argument and is written as the principal value of the argument of z so by amplitude we mean the principal value and secondly if the complex number z is equal to 0 plus 0 iota then argument of z which is equal to theta which is equal to tan inverse d over a will be equal to tan inverse 0 over 0 which is not defined and for a positive real number argument that is theta is equal to zero and for negative real number the argument theta is ambiguous and is plus minus pi however we shall take it as pi now the argument or amplitude for a positive 
imaginary number is theta which is equal to pi by 2. And for the negative imaginary number theta is equal to minus pi by 2 and amplitude of z1 into z2 the whole is equal to amplitude of z1 plus amplitude of z2 and in general amplitude of z1 into z2 into z3 and so on up to zn is equal to amplitude of z1 plus amplitude of z2 plus amplitude of z3 plus so on up to amplitude of zn and amplitude of z1 over z2 the whole is equal to amplitude of z1 minus amplitude of z2 now let us discuss how to find the principal value of the argument of complex number z where z is equal to a plus b iota so here we will discuss how to find the principal value of the argument of the complex number z lying in different coordinates for this in the first step find the value of tan inverse mod of b over a lying between 0 and pi by 2 and let it be alpha then in the step 2 find the quadrant in which the given complex number which is represented by P A B that is the point whose coordinates are A B lies now suppose we have determined the angle alpha then let us check how to find the argument of the complex number. Now consider these four diagrams. In the first diagram, if A is greater than 0 and B is greater than 0 in the complex number A plus B iota, then the point P to B which is representing the complex number will lie in the first quadrant. Now here, this is the angle alpha. Now we know that the argument of a complex number A plus B iota is an angle theta with initial side the positive x-axis and terminal side the way from the origin containing A plus B iota. So here, theta will be equal to alpha. That means argument of a complex number z which is equal to a plus b iota is equal to alpha. Now in the second case, if a is less than 0 and b is greater than 0, then the point p a b will lie in the second quadrant. Now here this is the angle alpha. Now we know that argument of a complex number that is the angle theta with initial side the positive x-axis and the terminal side the ray from the origin containing A plus B iota that is containing the point P A B so here this is the angle theta which is equal to pi minus alpha so here, argument of the complex number A plus B iota is equal to pi minus alpha. 
Now in the third case, if A is less than 0 and B is less than 0, then the point PAB will lie in the third quadrant. Now here, this is the angle alpha. Now by the definition of argument of the complex number, argument of Z, that is the complex number Z which is equal to A plus B iota is the angle theta. That is, this is the angle theta with initial side, the positive x-axis and the terminal side, the way from the origin containing the point P, A, B. So, theta will be equal to pi plus alpha. And also, in the clockwise direction, theta is equal to minus f pi minus alpha the whole. So here, the argument of the complex number z is equal to pi plus alpha or minus of pi minus alpha the whole. Now in the fourth case, if a is greater than 0 and b is less than 0, then in that case p a b will lie in the fourth quadrant Now in this case, this is, that is the angle XOP is the angle alpha. So here, by the definition of argument of a complex number, theta, in the clockwise direction, will be equal to minus alpha. And also, Theta, that is, the angle with initial side, the positive x-axis, and terminal side, the wave from the origin containing the point PAB, is equal to 2 pi minus alpha. Therefore, in this case, the argument of the complex number Z is equal to minus alpha or 2 pi minus alpha. So in this session we have learned about trigonometric or polar form of a complex number and argument of a complex number. So this completes our session. Hope you all have enjoyed the session.